introduce our program today. Okay. Our program today will be from one of our own members, DJ Bulls. DJ is one of our newer members. Uh, DJ just finished his first year at Gilmer Church of Christ as a minister there. Uh, he's working on his doctorate, soon to have it. I, I hope that everything goes on where that works out, but uh, we'll share a little bit of that. But DJ has been involved in a program for about the past 10 years, I'd say, uh, very actively involved. Uh, I, I'm looking forward to learning more about it. I know a little bit about it, but he's going to come up and explain and, and, and tell us about the program that he's been involved in. DJ? I guess when it, when it comes to you need a, a program uh, the day before Tuesday, the, the thought is preachers are full of hot air, so that's not a, not a problem. So I guess that's the thought process uh, here. Um, the TV will warm back up in a minute. Uh, for about the last uh, 11 years, uh, I've been involved with uh, a group of folks um, from across the country in a project called Timeless. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about what that is um, in a minute, but I want to start with just a, a couple of just real quick uh, questions. How, how many of you have some kind of ritual or routine that you do daily that's some kind of prayer, devotion, meditation, silence, I mean anybody, just anything, hey, some kind of routine? Does anybody want to share what what that what it is that you do, Brandon? What is it that that you do daily? Come, I mean, everybody's going to be different. I get up about three thirty in the morning and say my prayers for about an hour. Anybody else do something different or like that or different? That's a good one. I get up in the morning, go outside. And, you know, close the sun up or something. Early, get out of bed, go outside, throw my hands up, look up. I don't see God real clear, but but it's better than just forget about God. Yeah. I sing a little song to God, and then I come back and start getting a little bit of devotion and get going. Love it. Love it. Everybody's got got something that you do uh, every day. Maybe it maybe it's a nature thing. Maybe it's a silence and, and meditation uh, type thing. I, again, I'll, I'll come back to that and why that's important in a minute. But first, I want to talk about Stevie Wonder. You can make the connection in a minute. 1976. How many of you remember this album? The Songs in the Key of Life. It was a, was a really different album, right, musically, than it came out. He, he, he did a, a, a remake or two of a couple of old songs that Sinatra and Tony Bennett had, had made famous. But he called it Songs in the Key of Life. All, all kinds of different emotions. I, I really like that phrase. Um, the project that I'm a part of called Timeless um, is all about the Psalms. Uh, the Psalms uh, are, are the oldest devotional material in history, uh, going back to lots and thousands of BCs uh, in, in Hebrew history, and, and the Psalms sit at the middle of a lot of people's devotional life whether you're a part of a church or a faith community, really, if you've ever even attended a funeral in your life, chances are you know at least part of one psalm, right? You could just start saying, the Lord is my shepherd, and the rest of us could read that together just about like we could do the pledge, couldn't we? Well, I, I like that phrase, because if I were going to put a subtitle to the psalms, I would call it Songs in the Key of Life. Because in the psalms, there is literally something for everything that we encounter uh, in life. And so for thousands of years, whether it's, you know, old, old Hebrew scrolls with songs, uh, the psalms have been uh, important to everyone across the face of the earth, whether it's in, in, in worship or whether it's in prayer or in devotional life or uh, in some places, Parts of Psalms have become uh, part of governmental documents in, in uh, the Middle East. And so it may be from an old Hebrew scroll or uh, a, a, a 
Dead Sea Scroll uh, that looks like that, or maybe uh, in these really old church fathers, you know, like Eusebius or Tertullian or all these guys with great names that nobody would ever name their kids after, Clement of Alexandria, um, Pliny the Younger, all these people from, for thousands of years have been focused on the Psalms. They make great things to put on your wall with this real decorative uh, writing on scrolls and, uh, and the beautiful notation of things like Gregorian chant. Uh, maybe it looks like this, but as long as there have been people who believed in God, there have been Psalms. And they've been really, really important. Uh, or maybe if you've seen Monty Python. Pia Jesu Domine. Maybe you've seen that. Even if that's your only exposure, you've seen a psalm, even if it's made fun of. I don't know if you know this, but uh, there are still monks who get up at every hour of the night to recite the psalms. Some monastic communities, Benedictine monks, when you commit to becoming a monk, one of the things you do is you begin to commit the psalms to memory. I'm not a mathematician, but there are 150 psalms. Psalm 119 is over two, almost 200 verses in itself. Anybody got the whole psalms memorized? Yeah, not me. But uh, this daily rhythm of every day over the course of uh, a month, you, you would have gone through and recited at different hours during the day, a piece of a psalm or a whole psalm, and committed it to memory as a tool of devotion and commitment to God. The psalms are just really, really important when it comes to a life of faith and a prayer life and meditation. They've always been important. Let me, let me ask you this question. And I've already dangled the carrot a little bit here. What was the first book printed in pre-colonial America? Yes, the Psalms. It was the Psalms. Well done, Pete. The Bay Psalm Book, 1640. In 2013, a copy of this was found in a church in Boston and it sold for almost $14 million. You know, if, I, if I'd been in the I'd, I'd come and seen Randy and try to get a loan to buy that book. Because I love old books, and I collect old uh, hymn books and psalm books. My oldest one is from the 1750s. Um, but 1640, the Bay Psalm book was the first book printed uh, in America, and it was the Psalms. Uh, you think about... Um, what's going on in pre-colonial America and the first book was printed was one that was of a devotional nature. Right? Uh, every period during history uh, the Psalms have played an important part. And we, we can just pinpoint a ton of different things uh, on a timeline and see, wow, the Psalms have just been a mainstay across the globe in languages that we can't even think about. Right? We don't even understand. From the, the Genevan Psalm in the Psalter in 1551, we get one particular song that almost every church still sings today. Anybody want to take a guess? How many of you sing Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow at some point? Some of you probably sing it every Sunday, right? Or you grew up singing it uh, every Sunday. Yeah, 1550. That song has been around uh, almost 500 years. Well, what, what, does all this, uh, what does all this mean? Well, Timeless, um, a, a group of people in Austin, Texas, who um, I, I come from Churches of Christ. I'm at least a fifth generation member of those, those churches on both sides of my family. And it's a free church tradition. Uh, what that means is, you know, there's not a a book that comes down from you know some denominational headquarters somewhere that tells us this is what you have to sing on this day or you have to kind of follow by this 
pattern of worship or anything like that. It's a free church tradition. Baptists are, are from a free church a tradition, and there are lots of free church traditions, but us weirdos in churches of Christ, we are one of the few uh, churches that doesn't have a history of a, a period in our, our, our you know, 230 something year history where we have sung exclusively the Psalms. If you were to find yourself on a Sunday in Amish country in eastern Pennsylvania or in the Midwest uh, among Quakers or uh, Reformed churches, there are, there are groups that only sing the Psalms. Now think about that and you think about the songs you sing at church or the songs from church that you know. Chances are you can come up with something that's a song, but if you're if what you can sing is limited to only singing the psalms, that, that's pretty limiting, even though there's 150 of them and 150 ways to sing all 150 of them. But in churches of Christ, we don't have a history where we where we sung just the psalms. We might sing Psalm 23 sometime or a piece of some other psalm, but that's a little bit strange because every other religious tradition in Christianity has a period of time where they sang just the psalms. And so uh, a group of Old Testament uh, nerds got together, and I count myself in the nerd category, got, got together and, and we're trying to think about a way to find uh, some, some way to get our churches singing the Psalms again. They're the oldest hymn book. They're called Israel's hymn book sometimes. And so they got together and they started uh, translating from the original languages in Hebrew and Syriac and, and other other translations and pieces of Old Testament history, translating the Psalms all over again. Brand new translations. And, and after they were translated, well, what do we do with these new translations? How can we set these to, to music? And that's sort of when this project called Timeless was born. It's the first um, book like it in over 500 years to set out to set every psalm, 1 through 150, to a brand new translation from the Hebrew with new music and new lyrics based on a new translation. And so all in an effort to sort of reintroduce churches to the Psalms. Now it was born out of Churches of Christ, but uh, certainly the goal uh, would be that you know the Psalms are such an incredible tool uh, for personal devotion that this could be something that could be used and accessible uh, by anyone. We've published two of those volumes. We're working on volume three, and I'm, I'm one of those editors, and we're getting ready to send volume three to press. And, but you might hear all this and think, well, that doesn't do me any good. I don't like Hebrew. I don't really even like old stuff. I don't like old history. What does all this mean for me? Uh, sometimes it's, it's good to read something in just everyday, every man's language that can help make... Uh, Scripture new to you again. Eugene Peterson in the mid-90s did this with something called the message of the Bible in contemporary language where he de desired to from the original Old Testament uh, Hebrew manuscripts and Hebrew translations make the, vi the Bible vibrant in the way we talk today. And that's kind of uh, what this whole thing is. And you, when you sit down and say, okay, I'm going to read what Timeless says about Psalm 1. There's a new translation. There's words that, that are just easy to read language about you know what does this song mean how does it look the songs are poetry it's poetry language how does that poetry translate into English well, what does it mean for my life and then along with this commentary and with this translation the commentary isn't doesn't have to be a real thick book it's just a, a couple of paragraphs and there are uh, some sort of words to help focus those who would sing one of these songs. And so for all 150 songs, we've published two books and we're right at around 300 songs. Like Psalm 1, we have six or seven different tunes. One of them is Gregorian chant. Gregorian chant goes back to the 1450s, early 1500s of Pope Gregory and it has a certain uh, antique feel to it, shall we say, or there's a setting of it that sounds like it came off of a Jamaican island. You know, all of these different styles, it sounds like it could have been in your grandmother's hymn book, or it sounds like it was one of those convention tunes with the bass lead, and you can kind of see yourself in a tent meeting, you know, thinking about stuff like that. There, there are readings, and just all sorts of things uh, to provide a resource 
for someone who wants to uh, use the Psalms as a devotional tool. Tomorrow, or Friday of this week, we're launching a brand new website and, that includes you know, all of these songs. And if you're a music person, you don't have to be a music person uh, to have something like this make a difference for you. I mean, it's, it's made for everyone. Um, but we're getting ready to launch a brand new website this Friday. We have recorded uh, five different albums um, in Orlando uh, with singers from Disney. How many of you have ever been to Disney? When you are walking around downtown Disney and you hear people singing in the background, movie music medleys or things like that, the people who have seen those medleys are this group called Vocal Tapestry. And they're the ones who have recorded our albums for us. It was a, a very cool uh, coincidence that sort of fell in our lap. Um, we, 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 we think it was a God thing. Um, that, that they wanted to be a part of this project. We've recorded 150 different songs with them. But in the last five years, some of these singers sing with a group called Voctive, V-O-C-T-A-V-E. If you ever see you know, some of these groups like Pentatonics or acapella singing is kind of a cool thing in the world again. It's, it's got a novelty to it. And so these are some heavy hitters who have recorded these. I'm going to play a clip for you in a minute, but we've recovered, we, we have recorded four of these albums, um, it's a cool project, I thought I'd just show you just a little clip of, of them recording, uh, recording one of these songs, and I'll play another one for you. Sing for joy, Israel, sing for joy to the Lord. Shout aloud, chosen one, shout aloud to the Lord. To His Lord's come with praise, all in praise for glory. Bowing down, worship Him, sing for joy to the Lord. Somehow he had gotten a copy uh, of Timeless, and one of his more recent books is called 
um, the case for the Psalms, in which he talks about how the Psalms were something that Jesus quoted more than any other book in his ministry. Um, and he says, this is an incredible resource. We need to get the word out about something like this. Um, and that is just, that's just one example of the way people connect with the Psalms. It is just really, really incredible. We're launching a new website tomorrow or Friday, just timeless, uh, psalter.com, P-S-A-L-T-E-R. We have a Facebook page. I just you know, thought this would be an opportunity just to introduce you something that transcends uh, church buildings, it transcends denominations. Uh, I mean, this is at the heart of faith. And so um, the Psalms are an incredible tool. And I have a couple of copies of this. If you want to come up and look at it, uh, I've got two copies. If you're interested, if you want to buy them, I'll sell them to you. Um, but I'd love to, if you have questions, I'll be happy to demonstrate my ignorance about it. Or, or we can quit and we can go home or go eat the rest of the cake or whatever. What's your doctorate program in? My PhD is in church music. Uh, with a focus on uh, hymnody, uh, hymns and hymnals uh, in churches of Christ, which connects into you know how the psalms have been sung in different churches, in different ways over hundreds of years, particularly in the last quarter of a century or quarter of a millennium, 250 years, and the way the psalms have influenced that. Uh, but that that specifically is a piece of of my dissertation, which just finished chapter one of and all that and they got approved so praise the lord october the 6th d-day dissertation day yes. questions sir yes sir <laughs> pete what funds this it's a complete nonprofit 501c3 that just happened in the last two months uh, it's been privately funded by largely people in austin and people who have been blessed by the project have given to it over the years we were in the top 10 um, this last April for a, a grant for half a million dollars from the Luce Foundation, L-U-C-E, uh, which is a big, big nonprofit foundation. Uh, and for us to have gotten to that stage was, was pretty remarkable. We, were, we had our hopes pretty high on that. So to quote Psalm 22, we were kind of dashed against the rocks a little bit when, when we didn't get that. But, but God's provided for it, and so we know that'll continue to happen. All right, there we go. Thanks. Sir. When you said Gregorian chants, I cringe because, like you, I was in graduate school and studying all, night, all damn night, and right above me were two music students <coughs> whose dissertations were on the Gregorian chants, and they're playing these things at 4 o'clock in the morning. And if you've ever heard a Gregorian chant, when I heard that, I just started to shake over here. <laughs> Maybe you just haven't heard the right one yet, right? Right? There you go. Thanks.